so you're trying to quit pornography and you're thinking, right, the best way to do that is going to be doing semen retention. Should you actually go ahead or should you just maybe continue having sex, maybe masturbating from time to time and just focus on quitting porn? So that's the question, right? Well, I had a client only the other day say to me that he wants to do eight months of semen retention. And I found that interesting because I've kind of gone down a similar path before where I've said to myself, yeah, I'm going to do like one year of semen retention. I'm going to be really, really productive, put my energy into the right things, maybe make some more money, maybe build a really aesthetic body, get my stuff sorted out, and then I'll be okay to have sex. And I would have overcome this problem with porn and compulsion. The reality is, if you are choosing in your head to quit something for a certain period of time, all you're ever really going to do is temporarily get this problem out of your life and then bring it back into your life again in the future. It's future thinking. You're considering something in the future, but really what matters right now is changing the addicting neural pathways that have that have sort of being created due to looking at porn. It, it's porn addiction which we need to tackle. And, and I think once we change the porn addicted neural pathways, then we can start to consider, okay, do I want to do semen retention or not? But from my experience, trying to deprive yourself of, of a certain thing for a certain period of time is never going to work. And what you want to do instead is, is choose to permanently change addicted neural pathways and have permanent mental freedom i really really wouldn't advocate people to do like these temporary challenges that everyone's doing nowadays where you know you maybe do like one month of push-ups or, or something like that it's like okay yeah that might be enjoyable for a month but where's the actual consistency like what i do personally is focus on the habits that i want to integrate into my life which i can actually have permanently like sustainable habits so you know, maybe if I just go to the gym three days a week, but do that consistently, well, I'm going to put on muscle. I'm going to get in good shape. If I eat healthily pretty much every day and maybe have, you know, a cookie and, and some slightly unhealthy food now and then, and it's all quite reasonable. I'm not like considering like, oh, I need to be on some super strict diet. Again, that's that's going to lead to the like actual sustainable, consistent success. And, and that's what I do. You know, last night I cooked some really good food with my girlfriend. We had like some tofu we had some rice we had some pak choy broccoli a bit like soy sauce and some other vegetables and yeah it was quite a nice meal um probably would have preferred some chicken to be honest with you but hopefully she doesn't hear this and then what did we have oh yeah and then we had a cookie afterwards it's like all right yeah we had a cookie bloody hell it's not like a big deal but so many people nowadays are into like this fitness dieting extreme thinking where it's like everything has to be super perfect and then they end that diet and then they're eating like six cookies or like they're ordering like a domino straight away and it's like binge eating and it's like that is never going to lead to you having good stable grounded mental health and it's definitely not going to lead to you actually being in particularly good shape either semen retention it's very similar to dieting it's like i'm not going to have sex for a certain period of time and i remember when i was in portugal i've told this story many times but i was doing semen retention and i was trying to get to 90 days and there was this girl i really liked called danny and i wanted to have sex for essentially we got on really well we were both attracted to each other and we were flirting a lot and we didn't have sex because i said to her very straight i'm doing semen retention and i said to her i think i would have said and probably use these words i can't have sex with you <laughs> but I'd created this prison within my mind of not being able to do a thing that I actually wanted to do. And it's just not a healthy way to live. I ended up relapsing anyway with porn. Like how crazy is that? Like I was trying to do semen retention. I end up masturbating on my own, looking at pixels on a screen. That's where that deprivation thinking, this challenge mentality actually got me. It didn't help me change addicting your pathways, which is the real goal. The real goal is peace of mind, consistency, being able to live the way you want right now, today, every day. And that doesn't change based on some weird prison that you've created for yourself. But the rest of the world is obviously going to try and create these prisons for you. These mental blocks, these ways to live our life confined in a certain way, but it isn't productive and it's not 
going to lead to real, lasting, permanent mental freedom. So what's the alternative, right? What's the alternative? I think the alternative is just choosing to quit porn for good. Personally, I can't see how porn could ever bring any benefits to anyone's life. And so I would definitely focus on eliminating that entirely, like 100%, which is 100% possible. And then in terms of semen retention, I mean, for me personally, like I'm doing a half marathon on Sunday. So I just signed up to that actually yesterday because I was like, well, I'm doing a marathon in February in Seville and I know I need to start doing some training and a friend had a spare ticket. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. Like, let's start training on Sunday. Let's do a half marathon. So I'm doing a half marathon in Manchester on Sunday. I'll be staying over at my girlfriend Saturday night and I'll choose that night not to have sex. Now that's just like one night that I know I'm going to choose not to have sex because I want a little bit more vitality, a bit more of energy. And I do know for me personally, ejaculating does lead to me feeling a little bit more of energy, energy drain sometimes. So yeah, that night, yeah, I, I won't choose to have sex with her. But then like a few days later, if we're like being intimate and connecting well, it's like, yeah, maybe I'll have sex with her. Like, I'll, I'll just choose moment by moment, but it's it's just such a different mentality. It's just about being like reasonable and not like going all in and extreme and having this like super motivated mentality. It's just bringing a bit more reason and balance and taking it day by day. And like, even if I went and had sex with my girlfriend on Saturday night, again, like it's not going to be the end of the world. Like it doesn't matter that much. It's not that deep. And I just think doing these challenges is so unproductive and it just leads to a lot of, a lot of addiction. That's what it leads to, to be straight. Um, I think with porn, it's a different, it's a different thing entirely because porn is, to me, it's like, yeah, that's just a no-go. Like porn to me is like taking heroin. Like I just, that's just a no, like that's not happening. But then there's other things like, yeah, like sex or, or maybe masturbation for some people where it's like, yeah, maybe you can bring that into your life in reason. But I think what it comes down to is probably the one word which I think is really, really important to introduce here, which is intention what is the intention because with semen retention if you're doing that and well let, let's go back a bit actually what it's about really is it is about intention but i think it's the intention behind having sex so the intention for me behind having sex would be yeah just to maybe connect you're horny you want to have sex with your partner because you're with your partner and yeah why not um Whereas if like the intention was I want to get out of the temporary discomfort of withdrawal and you were experiencing some cravings and you were in the addictive sort of part of the mind, then it's a different story entirely. And you'll know, you'll know which one it is, like whether you're actually just trying to get out of something or whether you just want sex and it just feels like kind of right and normal for you. So I remember another time, like not actually too long ago, where I was experiencing some cravings, like cravings, uh, sort of compulsive desire, you know, wanting to look at kind of sexual content, wanting to masturbate, all of that stuff was going on for me. And I was with uh, my girlfriend and I decided that night, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to have sex tonight. Like this feels very much like I'm trying to get out of some discomfort in a way. So that night, yeah, I chose not to, but that's the thing is it's just knowing, knowing yourself, knowing whether is this desire compulsive, is this desire just spontaneous? And you can make that decision moment by moment. You don't have to go on some extreme challenge and get into this like compulsive state where you're depriving yourself of something that you want that actually isn't that unhealthy in moderation because that's the thing. It's really about moderation. I think a lot of this as well. Uh, some things are healthy in moderation. Some things aren't. Porn to me, like, no. Like, I, I just can't see how porn could ever be okay in moderation because porn just makes you want it more and more and more. Whereas I think with sex... Yeah, you might have sex and want to have sex again, but sex isn't this thing. Well, I guess actually if you're in a sex addiction, yeah, it could be. Um, so yeah, it, it, do, it does depend on your relationship to it, to be fair. But overall, you will know. Like if sex is causing you to just want to have, want to have sex again and again and again and again, then yeah, maybe, maybe choose not to engage in that behavior if it is compulsive for you. But ultimately, what I want to get across is that I think you will know if a behavior is compulsive what is the difference between compulsive and spontaneous desire? Compulsive is like you're always thinking about it. You're feeling this discomfort. You want to get out of this feeling. And it's like always on your mind whether you're doing it or not doing it. It's just like going round and round and round. It's really, really compulsive. Whereas spontaneity, like spontaneous desire is very different. It's like, I don't know, you're walking down the street and you're hungry and you decide to get some food or maybe 
yeah, you're watching a movie with a girl you like and you suddenly decide, like, oh my God, like, I just feel so attracted to you right now. I just want to kiss you. And you start kissing them. It's like that spontaneous desire. It's not been on your mind for ages. You're not been going round and round, obsessive thinking about this thing. And I think semen retention is, it's just so part of that compulsive state. It's like you're thinking on some level, like, I'm not going to have sex. I'm not going to masturbate. Like me telling this girl in Portugal, like I'm not going to have sex with you. Like all of that is just so compulsive. It's so unreasonable. It's not a healthy, balanced, good way to live, essentially. That's what I want to get across. So yeah, should you do semen retention whilst going through porn addiction recovery? My answer to that is look, the priority, the number one thing you want to do is change the addicting neural pathways of porn. And... What I think it comes down to is what is the intention of engaging? Like what is the intention of of engaging with either porn or sex? Is it to get out of discomfort? Is this a compulsive desire? Or is it actually spontaneous? Do you happen to just connect with someone and you wanna have sex with them? They wanna have sex with you, you have sex, all right? Don't put these like ideas in your head that doing X amount of months of semen retention is going to change your addictive neural pathways. It won't. To change your addictive neural pathways, what you want to do is take a very proactive stance where every time you have an urge, a compulsive desire, you think it through, you make a choice, you rewire those addictive neural pathways, and you do that consistently and repetitively. Eventually, you get to a position where you've rewired the brain, you feel totally in control of yourself, you feel empowered, you feel like you've mastered yourself and your actions and you can move on. You don't really think about the problem anymore. Semen retention is almost the antithesis of getting to that peace of mind state where you're in control of yourself and empowered and know that you don't ever get out of control or engage in compulsive behaviors. Thanks so much for listening or watching to this episode. I hope it has been useful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.